Welcome back to America's Now. The DC-3 plane may be a relic in most places. They went into service in 1936, and one even hangs in the Smithsonian's Air and Space Museum here in Washington, DC. But in isolated regions of Colombia, these planes are keeping the economy alive. In the town of Via Vicencio, they are known by locals as the buses of the jungle. They serve the region as the only links to areas barely touched by the modern world. Correspondent Toby Muse shows us what it's like to take this plane on its route through the Amazon. At 70 years old, this DC-3 plane looks like a museum piece. It sounds like one too. For me, it's an honor to fly a DC-3. To have in my hands a jewel of world aviation, it's still being used even these days. They say God lives in the clouds, and every day we visit him. For the past 30 years, Captain Joaquin San Clemente has been flying DC-3 planes over the Amazon jungle. In that time, he's racked up over 25,000 hours in the air. This particular plane was built in America as part of the war effort during the Second World War. In the US, planes like this one sit in museums. But here, the planes of Air Columbia cruise across the Amazon skies providing lifelines to the tiny towns spread out across the immense jungle. At Santa Monica, the nation's largest airliner emerges from its cradle at the Douglas plant. Built to order the DC-3 was first flown in 1935. It revolutionized air transport, traveling faster and further than the competition. The sturdy planes were so reliable, thousands were made for the Second World War. Throughout its history, it's been called Goonie Bird, Old Fatso, and American troops in Vietnam called it Puff the Magic Dragon. But one name stuck, Skytrain. Carrying cargo and passengers, these planes are the sky buses of the Amazon. Checking into your Amazon flight is remarkably stress-free. There are no x-rays and no one asks you to take off your shoes. Just show some ID and get on the plane. Now's a good time to admit, I don't really like flying, so we're gonna see how this goes. It's a cargo plane, so you can really smell past shipments. It smells of vegetables, fruit, and fish. They're gonna fill this part up in a few minutes with up to three tons of material. And here, about 10 passengers are gonna be seated. We'd be flying all across the Amazon, making a total of five different stops. Colombia's southeast corner is a region of few people and vast jungles, an area the size of Germany. These wilds make up a third of Colombia's territory, but less than 250,000 people live here. There are no roads. The only connection these towns have to one another and the rest of the country is the river and the sky. The ride's surprisingly smooth, with just patches of turbulence. But because the cabin isn't pressurized, it gets chilly at 9,000 feet and the roar of the engines makes conversation with the other passengers almost impossible. These pilots have a quiet pride in their ability to handle these planes over difficult territory. San Clemente uses his phone to see NASA reports on weather in the Amazon. Tropical storms can appear out of nowhere, often grounding flights. And the jungle is merciless. 
If a problem occurs in the air, there's no guarantee of finding a runway amid the rainforest so dense it could still be shielding uncontacted Indian tribes. Sometimes you get intimidated flying over such an immense area with so few chances of finding a runway if something happens. During one storm, one of the plane's engines died. There was severely bad weather which was pushing us down. Thankfully, these planes have the option of getting rid of the cargo over the uninhabited jungle. We tossed out chicken and meat that we were bringing to the town of Tahira. It's a hectic schedule. These planes can spend five hours in the air a day. Setting down in tiny towns, people have just enough time to unload the cargo before the planes take off again. The government has done little for this part of the country. Most of what you see has been built by the locals. There are so many DC-3 flying in Colombia because of the infrastructure in the east and southeast of the country. The infrastructure is lacking and very difficult to improve runways. These towns are mainly made up of indigenous and so-called colonos, Colombians who have left the cities to make a new life in the wilds of the jungle. The plains bring the basics, letters, televisions, meat, it's not just the necessities of life these planes are bringing, the food, the toilet paper. They're also helping to develop these tiny towns of the Amazon. About five years ago, DC-3s brought every single piece of material needed to build this entire mini stadium. Bringing in everything by air makes the goods expensive in these poor towns. Air Columbia charges just over $2 per kilo. But the locals are grateful for the service. Emerita Peña is a single mother who also mines for gold. It's the only way we have to get out of here, to go to the capital for medical appointments and important errands. Safety is a priority. After every flight, mechanics check the engines to make sure everything is in order. In a DC-3, there's always a mechanic on board, in case something breaks and he has the parts to repair it. It's very safe. The plane doesn't have a lifespan, so as long as it's in good condition, it can fly forever. San Clemente's daily commute is a beautiful one. When we fly over the Amazon in the DC-3, we have a chance to appreciate the greatness of this zone. Its beauty, its trees can grow as tall as 30 or 40 meters. Los árboles pueden tener 30, 40 metros de altura. Behind the beauty lurk dangers. Guerrilla groups and drug traffickers operate in parts of the Amazon. Army helicopters race out on a mission. Some years ago, the pilot had his own close call. Coming in to land in one airport, leftist rebels shot up the airplane. Thankfully, no one was injured. The DC-3 is special because it has the capacity to travel to faraway towns because of its fuel storage. It also has good cargo capacity, and essentially it can land on pretty much any makeshift runway in our country. The pilots often spend the night in these sweltering, steaming towns. Electricity here comes from generators, and those are all turned off at 11 o'clock at night. Early next morning, it's time to go. There's a schedule to keep.
our thanks to Toby Muse for that report. There are about 10 of these planes flying out of Via Vicencio. Another 10 are used for parts. Pilots like the DC-3s because of their reliability and that it can fly more slowly than other planes. It can also take the abuse of unpaved runways. It's given the old planes a new lease on life in Colombia's Amazon. Coming up. A flamenco singer with the voice of a diva. I think most of my music and all the things I want to say with my music and my art are related to, to the city that I grew up in, Granada. America's Next.